is where we need it. Contact tracing is a big one for us. Um, at 10 today, um, we're going to report 1,893 new cases and 12 deaths. Those are high numbers. And the problem with that is there's 1,893, but many of those are from labs that have been delayed. Some of the hospitals are telling us it's up to 19 days now to get results. Um, we have actually been told that some uh, labs are holding um, asymptomatic, non-essential worker samples until the turnaround time improves for healthcare workers and first responders with an indefinite amount of time. So you can imagine contact tracing on something that's 19 days old is really difficult. Not only that, we're now learning that many of those lab reports are incomplete. So you'll see on our website, um, we are not able to identify ethnicity much any longer. The, the unknown category is growing because we now have to call every single person and ask if they would declare the ethnicity because they have, it's blank on the form. That's really time intensive. And we are finding more and more errors. They left off date of births. Without DOB, you can't link it to what's going on. So that takes tremendous amounts of time. For every one positive, there's four on average, four contacts. So if you take 1,893 today and times it by four, that's how many that we're having to do today. Um, and you can imagine the phone calls and back and forth. And, the, and we actually started tracking how many wrong numbers there were on those lab reports. That's a lot. So uh, it's not only delays, it's information that's incomplete and in some cases inaccurate that's causing us problems. So our hope is we need to get creative on how we use that money. We've got to find better ways to do this. I have labs that are um, reporting electronically and reporting by fax. They send in two samples for the same person. It takes us a long time to try to link those and say, wait, wait, that's, that's the same one. We've got to do better than that. That's going to help us tremendously.